In this video, we're going to take a little bit more of a look at molecular orbital energy diagrams. Now let's look at the molecular orbital energy diagram for ethane. Ethane has two sp3 hybridized carbons. Here's ethane right here. And in the case of ethane, we have 14 atomic orbitals that combine to form 14 molecular orbitals. One, two, three, four, five, six s orbitals, one for each of the hydrogens, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sp3 hybrid orbitals, four for each of the carbons. Eight plus six is 14. For each sigma bonding molecular orbital, there must be a sigma star anti-bonding molecular orbital. So seven of the molecular orbitals are bonding, and seven of the molecular orbitals are anti-bonding. The bonding molecular orbitals are lower in energy than the anti-bonding molecular orbitals. In ethane, we have 14 electrons, one for each bond, and so those 14 electrons will fill these seven bonding molecular orbitals. Only the bonding molecular orbitals are filled, so we have a nice stable system. Also notice that there's a pretty large gap here between the bonding molecular orbitals and the anti-bonding molecular orbitals. Now let's take a look at the molecular orbital energy diagram for ethene. Ethene has a carbon-carbon double bond. So when we look at the molecular orbital diagram, you'll notice that it has a pi bond. The pi bonding molecular orbital and the pi anti-bonding molecular orbital are very close in energy, so we're going to look at these in some detail. Below the pi bonding molecular orbital are five sigma bonding molecular orbitals. These come from the five sigma bonds. One, two, three, four, five. There are also five sigma anti-bonding molecular orbitals. So again, we have 12 atomic orbitals mixing to form 12 molecular orbitals. The 12 atomic orbitals include the four s orbitals from the hydrogens, the six sp2 hybrid orbitals from the carbons, and the two p orbitals from the carbons. Our system has 12 electrons. 10 of those electrons fill the sigma bonding molecular orbitals, and two fill the pi bonding molecular orbital. The pi bonding molecular orbital is the highest in energy that has electrons, so it is the homo, the highest occupied molecular orbital. All of our anti-bonding molecular orbitals are unfilled or unoccupied. The lowest in energy is this one right here. So this becomes our LUMO, or our lowest unoccupied molecular orbital. As we look at the pi bonding molecular orbital, remember that it has a region above and below the atoms. Thus, when we look at the pi anti-bonding molecular orbital, we now have to add a nodal plane. This is incredibly unhappy, so if we were to add electrons to the pi anti-bonding molecular orbital, that would break the bond or destabilize the system. We only have the bonding molecular orbitals down here filled, so our system is considered to be stabilized. In our last molecular orbital energy diagram example, let's look at ethyne. Ethyne has a carbon-carbon triple bond, as shown here. We have three sigma bonds, so that's why we have three sigma molecular orbitals. One, two, three. We also have two pi bonds, which is why we have two pi bonding molecular orbitals. In total, we have 10 atomic orbitals mixing to make 10 molecular orbitals. The atomic orbitals include one, two s orbitals from hydrogen, the four sp hybrid orbitals from the carbons, and then the four p orbitals. We have 10 electrons in our system. Six electrons fill the sigma bonding molecular orbitals, so we have four electrons that fill the pi bonding molecular orbitals. These are equal in energy, and they are the highest, so we actually have two homos. All of these anti-bonding orbitals up here are unoccupied. These two are lowest in energy, so that means we have two LUMOs. This wraps up molecular orbital energy diagrams. You need to make sure that given a molecular orbital energy diagram, you can properly fill them with the correct number of electrons. You also need to make sure that you can identify bonding molecular orbitals, anti-bonding molecular orbitals, homos, and lumos.